Hello scholars, welcome. I'm Mr. Hinkle, and in this lecture, I want to introduce, give a brief explanation about the science of historical geology. So, if we break this down, geo means earth, ology is the study of, historical, this is going to be the history. So, the history of the study of the earth, well, you could think of it more in terms of, we're thinking about the study of earth history. This is really what we're getting into. So, purpose of this lecture is going to be, introduce the topic of a historical geology through the lens of objectives, key points, and importance. So, what do you say we get going? We're talking about historical geology or the history of the earth. And historical geology has a few key objectives. One of them is to understand the fossil record. Fossils are the remains of once living organisms that have been preserved, captured in the rock record. Rocks are created, and there's three types of rocks. Let's get into the rock cycle. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Sedimentary rocks are rocks that are deposited and solidify into rocks on Earth's surface, and sometimes they capture living organisms. A species might get trapped in the mud and die. That mud gets covered by a landslide and then preserved and turned into a fossil. And this is one way that we know the history of life or how life has changed through time, which we call evolution. So historical geology seeks to understand the fossil record and use that to inform us about how species have changed through time. Big point. Stratigraphy and geochronology. So stratigraphy is the study of the layer, the rock layers on Earth's surface. It is looking at sedimentary rocks, stratigraphic beds, and saying, what is the sequence of events that led to the landscape evolution that has deposited these layers through time. Geo, again, earth. Chrono, time. Ology, the study of. The study of the earth through time, which is another way of studying the history of the earth, earth history. So we're analyzing rock layers and their specific ages in order to understand what's happened to the Earth through these rock layers. Rocks are the history pages. How do we know that? This is my favorite question. The rocks tell us. What do the rocks tell us? They tell us temperatures. They tell us life. They tell us depositional environments, characters. We can learn so much. The geologist is a private investigator that says, hmm, this rock is telling me things, but what exactly is it telling me? Well, it's telling me the history of the earth through the stories that we can read. We want to, if historical geology is the history of the earth, we want to specifically reconstruct earth's history. This is a big one. So we can do this in a variety of ways, in a variety of scales. One way that really jumps out is Paleogeography. Paleo means ancient or old. Paleontology, the study of fossils. Paleogeography. The movement of Earth's continents through time. If you've ever looked at a map of the world, you may have noticed that the continents look like jigsaw puzzle pieces that could fit together. Well, in fact, at one point they did, and they formed a supercontinent called Pangaea that started to break apart around 180 million years ago. Historical geology uses the rocks to understand the rates, the positions, and the movement of Earth's continents through time to create the paleogeography so that we may understand what the Earth was like in its history. So we can reconstruct 
paleoclimate, we can reconstruct the paleontology, the paleogeography. We're really looking at reconstructing what has happened in Earth's history. That is the name of the game in the historical geology. We're also looking at geological processes, plate tectonics, which I talked about in paleogeography, erosion, sedimentation. These are what carve the landscape and what deposit sedimentary rocks. So another major objective is to understand, to study how geologic processes work. And we get a lot of these in sedimentary structures. Another big part of historical geology is looking at the structures that the geology has created and preserved in the rock record from Earth's history so that we can understand how things are working today. So these are the objectives. There's some key tools or concepts that we use in geology. The geological time scale. This is the periodic table of the elements for geology. It basically is a sequence of events that have happened from the beginning of the, uh, of the universe, but the beginning of our Earth around 4.6 billion years ago up to today. And it's divided into eons, eras, periods and epochs, different um, scales of measurement that highlight different events that have happened in Earth's history. And we can use this geological time scale as a framework for understanding how the Earth was at various points in Earth's history. So this is a big one. We'll do it over here. Time scale. Uniformitarianism. That is way too many syllables. Uniformitarianism. Way too many syllables. But the concept is like this. The geological processes that we observe happening on Earth today are operating in the same way that they did in Earth history. So we can look to the present to understand how the past worked saying that the science governing Earth surface processes today hasn't changed. This is a key assumption. So in order to recreate, reconstruct Earth's histories, we use the concept of uniformitarianism to use what we know about the Earth today and apply it to how the Earth might have been formed yesterday. Plate tectonics, the unifying theory of geology. This one came on the scene in the 1960s with seeds back to Alfred Wegener in the 1910s on the origin of continents, 1915. He wasn't the first person to ever have this idea, but he was the first person to publish. The fact that continents move, and not only do continents move, but they're driven by Earth's internal heat that creates big separation centers, spreading centers in the middle of the oceans where new crust is created and subduction zones where crust is consumed. Plate tectonics helps us to understand why continents move, why there are ocean basins, why we have mountains, and the age of rocks as they are where they are. So this is geology's big idea. Stratigraphy, again, so this is an objective and also a key concept, stratigraphy, the order of the rocks, the study of rock layers. And we need to understand stratigraphy in order to place events on the geological time scale. <gasps> What's that? The objectives and the key concepts are all interwoven to help provide an in-depth understanding of historical geology. Amazing! Can you imagine that? Let's go with a couple more. The fossil record. We're back at it. So there are fossils in rocks. The fossils are contained within the stratigraphy. And understanding the rela relationships or assemblages of these fossils helps us to understand stratigraphy. It helps us to understand 
geochronology. A more recent innovation, technological innovation, is the ability to analyze the amount of specific elements located in rocks. Elements form compounds, compounds form minerals, minerals form rocks, and when you crush a rock up and push it through a mass spectrometer, you can analyze the elements. And through the process of uh, radioactive decay, we are able to place precise age estimates. That's how we can say the Earth is 4.6 billion years old, or Pangaea started to break up 180 million years old. This is how geologists are able to place specific age dates on rocks through radiometric dating. Great. So we've got some objectives here. We've got some key concepts here. But who freaking cares? Well, geologists do. Or anyone who's interested in understanding the history of the Earth. And why wouldn't we? It's kind of like knowing about your past, knowing about your childhood. If, if you were the Earth, you'd want to know how you got to be the way that you were. And so would other people. So this is what Earth scientists explore. They're interested in knowing how current geological processes fit in the context of the development, the origins, the growth of our Earth. And we can apply that to pressing issues today like climate change, sea level rise, the frequency and distribution of major storms. So there is a practical, beyond just understanding Earth's history, that context allows us to understand current events and issues so that we can have a deeper understanding to help overcome some of Earth's biggest geological challenges. The technological age needs energy, and energy comes from resources, specifically oil and gas, but also wind, water, solar, and understanding where our resources are, what is the distribution, how Earth's surface processes work, how they have worked in the past, allows us to power our Earth, which is very, very important. The environment. We all live here. We are part of our environment. The environment is not different. The nature is not different. It's part of it. You and I are the environment. So we can understand our place in the world through the study of our history, this helps us to understand our interaction with Earth's climate. Climate change, one of the most pressing issues of our generation, but climate change is a natural process that has been happening for a very long, as long as the Earth has been around, the climate has been changing. And there are some external events that have changed climates, volcanoes, asteroids, and currently humans. So, how, what are the impacts of anthropogenic climate change in relation to the history of the Earth, which has a variable climate regime? That's a big question and really worth exploring and understanding. Historical geology helps us answer that question. And then let's not forget about science for the sake of science. Science is awesome, knowing things. So science seeks to understand how the world works through observation and experimentation. Well, we can observe the rocks on Earth's surface, and we can analyze them to understand how the world works, not only today, but also in the Earth's history. So geology is so cool. It's all around us. We are part of the environment. We are part of nature, and so is the geology. Every day we are surrounded by geological processes, from the rain infiltrating down into the ground, to the evaporation, to storms happening, to rivers carrying sediment, to volcanoes erupting, earthquakes. This is plate tectonics in action. We are surrounded by geology. And Historical geology provides a context for the history of our planet, looking at physical processes, fossil records, stratigraphy, 
to utilize these key concepts so that we can reconstruct Earth's past, interpret geological events that have shaped our present and will influence our future. There's so much good stuff in historical geology and I cannot wait to talk about some of these ideas with all of you. Thank you so much. See you again.